All right, so this project started with our proving ground. And you can still submit your proving ground. You'll see if you're missing anything from the rubric on my scores for you. This proving ground, we sketched our logo in three different ways, right? Central, symmetrical, dynamic, a play of positive and negative space. That was one part of the proving ground rubric, to post it in at least those three ways. And they should all be labeled so, so we can see. The next part, and the part that some of you still need to do, is writing a comment on someone else's. Not mine, not the instructor's, but another student's logos. And you write a comment that says which one you prefer of their solutions, and also something about it. You know, whether something that's strong about it, or something that can be improved, or both. Right? Because that's getting input. So that's required for your, your proving ground. Once you've done that, and you can see kind of the input, you decide which logo approach you want to refine. And we do that in the next step. And this is assignment four. So you get separate credit. You get points for proving ground two. And then you also get points for assignment four. Okay. Assignment four starts with a refined sketch. So this was the one I chose from proving ground two, and I refined it. I cleaned it up a little bit. And then I brought that into Illustrator and I used a combination of the pen tool and the pencil tool and the small selection tool and the cornering tool, you know, to get my shapes. I also used the Pathfinder, and that's going to be really important for some of you in order to punch out this shape in the design. Now, I saved that in two different formats as vectors, and that's important. The first format was as an AI file which only works in Illustrator, but it saves all of the settings in Illustrator. All the layers and vectors that are turned on or not turned on, the sketch that's there, everything. The other type of file I saved is not an Illustrator file, but it is a vector file, and I saved it out of Illustrator. I saved as an EPS, and if I open up that file, I can open it up with, I actually want to make the default a preview. That's weird. Usually the default would be preview. Huh. Interesting. Preview will no longer open EPS files. That's annoying. That's a, that's a change. Okay. This EPS will open in Photoshop, but look what happens when I do that. This is important. If I double click on my EPS, before it will open it, it will force me to rasterize it. I don't want to do that. What is rasterizing? It is turning ve a vector into pixels, right? I don't want it to be rasterized. So instead, I opened up a Photoshop file and I said file new. I created the paper for it to go onto. This is how we make things print ready. Eight by 10 inches by 350. Remember it's inches, not pixels. And then I click and I drag and drop the EPS file onto it. Then it does not rasterize it. It keeps it as a smart object so it can be infinitely scaled and never stop being a vector. Then I place it and then I saved it as a PSD file. And I marked it as green. So this is my PSD. Then I saved that as a JPEG. That JPEG is what goes into Canvas. And then I save it as a TIFF file. I went to File, Save As, and I changed the format to TIFF, but I also added a capital P and a capital R in front of it. That stands for Print Ready. And I saved it to the desktop. I'm not going to replace the one I already saved. And then I marked that with purple. So that should open up in preview, just like a JPEG does. The difference is a TIFF, unlike a JPEG, loses no quality. It is a lossless compression format when used with LZW. All right, now what do I do with that TIFF file? I've already posted my JPEG into Canvas for assignment four. This is what you do with your TIFF file. You go to dropbox.com. And you log in to the class account. 
And I'm not going to show you that account here because this is a public YouTube, but you can go to the links in the Canvas course and see what our account is, our username and our password. You get to here, you click on digital art class files. You click on flatten TIFF files to print. It's an on the nose name, right? Because this is where you're going to put your flattened TIFF files to print. And then you will see your name with a folder that I've set up for you. And I see my name with the folder. We are all FA231. We're fall 2023, my first section, right? So you're going to open your folder. And then you're just going to drag and drop just your TIFF file there. This is not a backup drive for you, right? This has limited space. But this is for what we print. So our flattened TIFF files go here. If you're not sure if your TIFF is flattened, you can open it up with Photoshop because your TIFF should be flattened. And my TIFF is not flattened. You see how it's two layers? So I go to Layer, Flatten, Flatten the Image, and then File, Save. Because if even empty layers take up memory. So I'm going to move that into my folder, and it will update it. So now I've got a flattened TIFF file. Notice, this is at full print resolution. This file size is only 220 kilobytes. It is tiny, and it will print beautifully. So now that that's in my print file, I'm ready to print. And I'm going to go to the back of the room and print it.